Before we look at the paragraph, I want you to, have to remember the structure that James suggested in the video. You can see the grabbers. He suggested five of them. A joke, a proverb or quote, an anecdote, a surprising fact, or a question that raises the reader's curiosity and engages them, wanting them to know more. Now, once we'll have, we'll have a look at the grabber in the paragraph that I'm about to show you, which comes from a grade 12's assignment. I want you to see if you can identify a grabber. Then I want you to think about the structure. We've got the grabber, which is the first point. This person, he, when James did it, he did all his fair in love and war. By getting the attention, we are getting an opportunity to, to be immersed in what's coming next. So we'll have a look at one assignment, paragraph. Here you'll see, it says, my memorial depicts the Aboriginal Australians of being the first owners of the land and how they used aspects of its natural resources for living. Displayed in my memorial is the Brisbane River colored with the indigenous flag. I've done this to reflect the ancestral stories and rituals involved with the Brisbane River and the history and use of the river and how it was used to supply them food and water. Now, to start off with, there are some mirrors. Certainly the first one of, shouldn't be there. Um, and I did actually highlight that as being the subject simply because it's important to understand where the subject is. But if you look at this, you see that there is no grab. It tells me exactly what we're talking about. We know it's the memorial, so our subject is clear. But there is no grab to, to lead me in. There is no use of a quote. Now, obviously, a joke is perhaps not the most appropriate thing to be starting off an RE assignment with if it's not um, appropriate. But a proverb could have been used. A quote definitely could have been used. Even an anecdote. If she had started off by saying how important certain parts of the Brisbane River are to her, and then linking that to the customs of the Turbul and Yagara people, that would have made a lot of sense. A surprising fact would have been good there. For example, did you know that the Kurilpa Bridge is so named because of the Kurilpa, the rats, the rodents that were hunted there? They were a food source. And of course, we could have had our curiosity peaked. But unfortunately, there are no questions there, and nor are there any signals. There is no controlling idea in this paragraph, which tells me that there are going to be a number of things that she's going to explore. Nor are there cohesive ties suggested. So at this point, we know that she's going to talk about a memorial, and we know that it's going to be about Aboriginal people, or the land, their relationship with the land, but there isn't very much else. Had she managed to structure it more effectively, she probably would have got a much better result. When she was editing, she needed to read more thoroughly because obviously losing marks for not capitalizing because you're showing that you don't understand the use of capitals, you know, that's important. You're going to go through one of your own. The good thing is, whilst this student left school and didn't have a chance to reiterate her knowledge of paragraph structure, even though it had been done throughout her schooling, you're doing this in grade 10, which means that the next assignment you do should theoretically be much more effective in terms of your outcomes. And then, of course, if you keep it in mind, you'll be much better off next year and the year after.